Hi, my name is Yaro. I'm software engineer at EdTrade and an Envoy contributor. My co-speaker today is Takeshi, who is also software engineer at EdTrade and contributor to ProxyVasm. In this session, we will present you the work that we've been doing to enable new, more accessible way to develop extensions for Envoy. So here is our, our agenda for today. First, we will explain why WebAssembly out of all the things. What is the problem? Then we will talk specifically about WebAssembly in Envoy. And next, we will introduce you Envoy SDK for Rust that we've been working on. And our primary focus will be on lessons learned. Because they are not limited to Rust and Go, we've picked those items that are universal and with minor changes can apply to every language. After that, we'll demo a practical ready-to-use extension that has been developed using this SDK. And then Takeshi will take over uh, to update you on almost Envoy SDK for Go. We'll finish with key takeaways, call to action, and Q&A session. Let's be clear about the goals we set for this session for ourselves. We want you to walk away out of the session knowing what WebAssembly in Envoy is all about, how to get the most out of it as of today, and what are the lessons learned by the community so far. So this is an informational component, but there is also an inspirational one. We want to inspire you to give WebAssembly a real try. Not in a year from now, when you might think it will be finally production ready, but today. So give it a try to extensions that we've been developing and that we'll show you later in the demo section. Try to develop Envoy extension of your own. Try to develop Envoy SDK for your favorite language. And ultimately, join the community and help us to develop all these things together. So as attendee to this conference, you're probably familiar with the status quo of Envoy extensibility. You have to develop custom extensions in C++, statically link them into Envoy binary, maintain a custom build of Envoy, keep up with upstream changes, keep up with security releases. Overall, there is a lot of burden involved when you decide to extend Envoy in such a way. That's why Envoy community has been asking for a long way, for a different, for a long time, for a different extensibility model, where extensions could be loaded into Envoy dynamically, and ideally, it would be possible to develop extensions in languages other than C++. And WebAssembly is an answer, is technology that makes it all possible. So WebAssembly is a virtual machine and compilation target for general purpose programming languages. What it means is that you can develop applications in programming languages like C++, Rust, Go, but when it comes to compilation, compile into WebAssembly code instead of machine code. Envoy plays a role of WebAssembly host. It's responsible for loading and loading WebAssembly-based extensions at runtime, for exporting APIs that such extensions can use, and integrating such extensions into its regular request processing flow. The final piece of the puzzle that you need to know is ProxyVasm ABI. It's a specification of a low-level interface between proxy and WebAssembly-based extension. As its name implies, it's not limited to Envoy, and it's meant to allow the same extension to run inside various proxies compatible with this spec. Very ambitious goal. So the next question is, why Rust? As we mentioned, you can develop WebAssembly-based extensions in any language that supports compilation into WebAssembly code. So how do you choose one of these languages? We prepared a table, um, and we suggest you to try to make the decision to try to answer the following questions. Can you use features of this language, uh, all features of this language and all its st standard library if you're going to compile it into WebAssembly? Will you be able to reuse other libraries in the ecosystem? And will the language retain its original performance characteristics if compiled into WebAssembly instead of machine code? Well, as you can see, C++ and Rust are the most obvious choices. However, don't be discouraged about assembly script and TinyGo just set your expectations right in advance. So to be fair, there are other SDKs available for Envoy. C++ SDK, AssemblyScript SDK, and even Rust SDK. So why do, do we decide to develop yet another one? So after looking into all these SDKs, we came up with a slightly different set of requirements. First of all, we want our extension model to be independent from ProxyVasm ABI. As we mentioned, ProxyVasm ABI 
tries to be compatible with all proxies out there, which means is that it's not really aligned with Envoy. So when we develop HTTP filter of an, for Envoy, we want to call it HTTP filter and not HTTP context. When we develop HTTP filter factory, we want to call it this way instead of root context. And when we develop access logger, we want to call it this way instead of, well, there is no even equivalent in proxy wasm. Next, we want to develop uh, all types of Envoy extensions. And we want to use the same SDK for all of them and the same model for all of them. Next, we want to have seamless migration paths for existing extensions from C++ into Rust WebAssembly. And finally, we want source code of our extensions to be unit testable. So here is a quick glimpse into Envoy SDK for Rust uh, to give you an idea how the source code looks like. Um, this is Hello World HTTP filter where we handle request headers. Next, this is factory for this uh, HTTP filter responsible for creating new instances and initializing them with some shared state. This is an example of how to use um, APIs provided by Envoy host, yeah, like in this case, stream info inf API that you can use to find out more information about current request that is being processed. And finally, example of a unit test where we create something called fake Envoy, set up listener, send request, and assert response. So the primary goal of the session is to share experience. So let's work through the issues we've met while developing this SDK, the lessons we learned, and some random notes on the current status of Proxivasm ABI and Envoy. Error handling is crucial to, to every application. This is why the very first question you might want to ask is what happens when things go wrong? So what happens when extension fails at runtime? Let's try to find out by introducing intentional error, like index out of bounds error. So what happens if you try to run this code? Uh, you'll find out that until very rec recently, Envoy was completely crashing after such a bug in extension code. So apparently WebAssembly sandbox wasn't a true sandbox. Right now, Envoy behavior has changed and it doesn't crash anymore, but it doesn't work either. Once error like index out of bound happened, the filter stops, completely stops working. So if we look into the cause of this error, it happens that uh, when panic is happening inside WebAssembly code, its execution gets terminated ab abruptly uh, without doing stack unwinding. It means that memory on heap and logs are not released, and consequently, it's not longer it's no longer safe to use not only a single HTTP filter instance uh, where the error has originally happened, but the entire Wasm VM. In other words, when error happens, it affects not only a single HTTP request, but rather all requests that are being processed by Envoy in parallel. So, what solutions uh, can be there? Um, first of all, without proper support for stack unwinding that should be implemented by WebAssembly engine and your programming language, it's not possible to handle the situation gracefully. Until then, until such support is implemented, avoid panics in the source code of your extension and your SDK. As an example, we've designed Envoy SDK for us to never panic. Uh, there are no calls to panic and rep expect in our source code, and all APIs must return result type instead. Um, the next question, so once you uh, eliminate all the panics, um, the next question is, how do you handle errors? And here is an example of, once again, example of our source code. Uh, this is a uh, HTTP filter and callback, which allows extension to uh, observe and manipulate request headers. This method itself returned result type instead of panicking. And inside this method, we called one of APIs provided by Envoy, yeah, like get request headers. The one thing that you need to know about uh, calls from extension into Envoy, Envoy is that all such calls can end up with an error and you need to handle them in some way. However, in most cases, uh, 
and those errors are not recoverable and the only logical way that you can do just to propagate it up. Rust provides very convenient syntax, yeah, like this question mark. Operator that allows you just to propagate uh, error up, but in the end there must be some code somewhere that actually does error handling. So our solution to that is that we move all yeah, just error handling logic uh, out of your extension into SDK itself. So as long as your extension returns error and not panic, we will be able to provide proper error handling logic. So for HTTP filters, we will reply with HTTP st status 500, internal service error, and for network filters, ideally, we would close the connection entirely. However, it's not possible right now because ProxyWasm API doesn't support closing connections just yet. Uh, next about error handling, you need to know that WebAssembly doesn't support taking a stack trace. So if we take a look into our array index uh, out of bounds error once again, uh, and the log, uh, and the line is log that it leaves, uh, it doesn't have the entire, the, the complete stack trace, but rather only a single line. And often one line is not enough to understand the entire context that led to this particular error. Uh, so this, is, this issue is not unique to Rust, it's inherent to WebAssembly itself. And in order to fix the, this, uh, there is a proposal in WASI, which is a system interface for WebAssembly. Until it gets fixed properly in the meantime, uh, the only workaround is to enrich the context for your errors manually. For example, by wrapping them before propagating them up. Uh, watch out for string type in your programming language. C++ and uh, in C++ and Go, string is an arbitrary byte array, while in Rust and assembly script, string must be UTF encoded. So the problem is that when you uh, with things like HTTP header values. Um, are not required to be UTF-8 encoded. So Envoy will happily pass these values into your extension, and your extension will crash while trying to treat them as UTF-8 encoded. Uh, and the problem is its security vulnerability. Attacker can crash your Envoy or make extension non-operational by sending specific request data. So as a solution in Envoy SDK for Rust, we are using a custom uh, type, byte stream, to be very specific, very explicit uh, about those places where UTF encoding is not guaranteed. Also, we'd like to ask ProxyWasm spec to be more explicit about encoding of strings in its APIs. Because using byte stream everywhere is not a solution. It makes things more complicated when you need to pass such a value into next string centric API. Let's move on to unit testing. There are two approaches how to unit test code of your extension or SDK. One of them is to compile into WebAssembly code and run it inside a real WebAssembly host. The second option is to compile into native machine code and run it without any ties to WebAssembly. And the problem here is that uh, to be able to run unit test inside real WebAssembly host, you need at least uh, WASI support, which is a system interface for WebAssembly. However, there is an issue in ProxyWasm ABI, in particular function named malloc, that makes it impossible to use it with the Rust toolchain. So at the meantime, uh, we run our unit test by compiling them into native machine code and running them without any ties to WebAssembly, which is not bad, just not perfect. Um, Next, we want to notice that we've gone a great length to support unit testing of extensions. To test individual met methods, functions in isolation, we provide some fake API implementations, yeah, like fake stats, fake HTTP client, fake stream info. On top of this, we also provide test framework that simulates envoy request processing flow. It might seem too, too much, and it probably is, but it allowed us to catch some blanks in proxy wasm spec and some bugs quirks in real envoy implementation. Uh, the next thing to watch out for is that 
proxy vassal to be aware of is that proxy vassal spec emits details in certain cases, leaving no other choice uh, but to learn how to use API by looking into Envoy source code instead. For example, so-called mysterious yeah, like proxy uh, get property API, uh, which under the hood uses some ad hoc data encoding. So after reverse engineering Envoy sources, we were finally able to offer much more friendly API for the users of our Envoy SDK for us. Yeah, like, like in this example, uh, when you, we, we are now able to provide strongly typed API to get from Envoy information about single request. For example, connection ID, request ID, plugin name. And finally, final thought about ergonomics of SDK. The SDK should make a straightforward how to use APIs correctly. In other words, proxy bus and spec should not be on the learning path of every extension developer. So to make it possible, we have to be very opinionated in our SDK. We deliberately, de deliberately abstracted away from the low level proxy wasm API to make our APIs more idiomatic to the language and more intuitive to the users. And finally, it's demo time. So I've been telling you how great uh, Rust is, how great uh, Envoy SDK is, but now you're probably wondering, yeah, like, okay, show me the code. Yeah, just are there any real extensions that has been developed this way? And this is a yeah, like, proud moment where we can finally share with you some work that we've been doing at Tetrade. So at Tetrade, we care a lot about enterprise use case and so-called legacy software. Those legacy systems have been around for decades and will probably stay around, around for another decade. So instead of fighting them off, we embrace them. So we've been working on, on something we called can be called enterprise suite, which consists of extensions and web extensions that are not uh, cloud native, they're not hot technologies, but still they can be quite useful in the device environment. As an example, it's SNCP filter and LDAP filter and more will follow. So in the demo, I will show you SNCP filter, but if you prefer LDAP filter more, <laughs> you can check it out on your own. The use case for Envoy SMTP filter is to bring visibility into how your applications make use of SMTP. So let's see how Envoy can help us with that. We will first set up test environment. Uh, we will run SMTP server convenient for use in development. It has uh, some user interface that we can use to make sure that messages indeed arriving at SMTP server. And we have an uh, example Java application uh, that will be every second will be logging an error and every error will be sent by email. So let's run this application and we should see uh, messages start arriving. So let's take a look next uh, what's going on on the wire. Uh, you can see that SMTP is a simple text-based protocol where a client is sending commands and server responds with replies. So a typical email transaction consists of a uh, client filling in uh, fields like from and to and providing the message of uh, email. Once SMTP client is finished uh, sending a uh, message body, Transaction is email transaction is considered committed and now it's time for server to either accept it, accept email for delivery or reject it. In this case, SNTP server uh, accepts uh, email message and client can now quit and close session. So let's see uh, how uh, Envoy can provide visibility into this flow. First, we'll reconfigure uh, application to send emails to Envoy instead of sending them directly into SMTP server. And then we will start Envoy with our extension uh, pre-configured. So we're using get Envoy tool uh, to start Envoy with assembly based extension init. Uh, get Envoy is one of the tools, open source tools we developed at Tetrate 
to help you getting started with uh, developing WebAssembly-based Envoy extensions. So let's see metrics. Okay, okay, applications not started. Um, yeah, we can see that um, Envoy is now collecting metrics about SMTP traffic. Um, at high level, we see number of emails that uh, Envoy has been seen, sent by client, number of email accepted by SNTP server for delivery, and number of mail rejected. We can also have um, coarse-grained metrics about commands in general without going into details which exactly commands. So this is another uh, use case, uh, yeah, just to, to demo. Like any other uh, extension, our SNTP extension supports configuration, and one of the options is how many metrics to expose. So let's reconfigure and let's restart in way. So we activated, uh, so we want to see more metrics, in particular metrics for every single command we saw uh, in this flow. So for every single command like mail, recipient, data. So yeah, now you can see that we have this matrix for every single command. So this was a completely successful flow where all commands were successful. Uh, let's do something different. Let's uh, change configuration of SNTP client to so that SNTP transactions will uh, end up with errors and see if Envoy will be able to catch this. Yeah, you can see that this counter, counters that start increasing, it's a number of failed um, commands. If we now go back to uh, Wireshark and capture traffic one more time, uh, we can see that the overall flow has changed so right now, yeah, just email transactions start, st st are failing at a step where the SNTP client is trying to fill in a uh, two field with invalid value. Finally, let's take a look into the source code of uh, Envoy SNTP filter itself. As you can see, it's indeed developed in Rust, and it has a structure, uh, well, resembling structure of native Envoy extensions. We have configuration, uh, we have stats, uh, we have filter itself and we have it, its factory. And a filter is a network filter and we uh, override callbacks for to handle uh, new connection, downstream data, data from SNTP client and upstream data, data from SNTP server. Since uh, SNTP is simple text-based protocol, so we chose to implement protocol parsing completely ourselves. But in case of LDAP, uh, we would use uh, a third-party library for parsing yeah, LDAP, which is binary protocol. So that uh, concludes our overview of uh, Envoy SNTP extension. And now it's time to Takeshi to update you on SDK for Golang. In this part, I'm going to talk about Go SDK for Proxy Wasm and its current status and challenges and the future plans. My name is Takeshi from Tetraid. So let's begin with why Go for Proxy Wasm. Go is the um, one of the most widely used languages in the cloud native world, right? And uh, being able to use existing Go libraries or packages is a very good developer experience for Wasm extensions. And also, the number of developers writing Envoy extension will increase dramatically, which is really great for both for Envoy community and the Go compiler community from Wasm perspective. That's why I started working on this project. And uh, so let's um, talk about compilers. There are two compilers out there which comply with Go language specification. 
And uh, speaking about paroxysm, it's not the official compilers cannot be used for producing paroxysm compatible binaries yet, because、um, we cannot control export sections, and also it assumes that the running host environment is kind of Go specific JavaScript environment. So that's why we choose TinyO as the compiler for our SDK, and the TinyO supports WASI target. And we, this is my major contribution to TinyO, and also TinyO allow us to control import and export section. So, and also speaking about the binary size, Hello World binary, binary,、um, the official compiler's binary is much larger than TinyO, as you see. So this is why I think TinyO is the way to go. Speaking about、um, proxy wasm, so Go SDK. There is some、um, repository named Proxy Wasm Go SDK in Tetrate Labs. It started as my personal project and then moved to the Tetrate Labs. And it depends on TinyGo. And also, all the examples in C++ and Rust can be re-implemented, so it's usable. And so please give it a try. And also, it supports、uh, Envoy host emulation for unit testing. So, which means you can use Go test command for testing your filters or extensions without running Envoy processes. This is really great for developers because we can develop、um, our extension just like you do with the native applications. So, what are the challenges we are facing? And the first is that are、uh, some of the existing libraries are not supported yet. There is、um, Several reasons, but the、um, some of the system cores are not not available in TinyO or Proxy Wasm、uh, C plus plus host. And for example, you cannot use crypt run package, or you cannot use OS dot get env, and also time dot now. These are the they are not available currently, but they will be supported. And also, reflection packages is not re is not fully supported by TinyO, so you cannot use JSON package. But this is highly demanded, so I'm gonna work on this. And also, garbage collection is re-implemented in TinyO, which is totally different from the official garbage collection, and it uses simple conservative Merkin sweep, and it needs to I think. It's necessary for us to assess performance impacts on proxy wasm. Maybe we gotta develop our own GC algorithm tailored for proxy wasm. And also, Go routine is almost unavailable. Tinyo uses、um, a little VM Go routine, but no schedulers runs by default in the event-driven and the thread-local VMs in Envoy. So you could use、um, Go keyword, but no, no one can predict when this Go routine will be run or things like that. So, what's next? Contributing back to TinyGo and the reflection package implementation or other system core support in order to,、um, in order to be able to、uh, use existing Go libraries. And also, we need to do some GC performance analysis. I've been working on this, and also maybe, as I said, we may be we have to、um, have custom GC for proxy wasm. And also, go routine support. In order to do that, we must answer questions like how to deal with go routine in a thread local wasm VM executed in the event driven manner. So that's all. That's all. And、uh, let's wrap up. So start Wasm today. Let's start developing Wasm extensions. There are four languages out there, and also you can contribute to the community by developing SDK for your own favorite languages. And also there is Get Ember project that you can use that you can easily get started with Wasm extension. We accumulated lessons learned, so please give it a shot. And also. Join our community and give us your feedbacks. Thank you for coming today. Let's get on to Q&A session.